Week 8, Problem 7. Use Lenz's Law to answer the following questions concerning the direction of induced currents. Express your answers in terms of letters A and B in each part of the figure below. All right, so there's two ways to kind of do this. One is like the intuitive conceptual way that um, <clears throat> the induced current will create a magnetic field that opposes the changed magnetic field. Uh, that's a conceptual way. And then the other way is the straight math. So math, i.e. Lenz's law, electromagnetic force, which is voltage, minus d flux dt. And you just solve this. I kind of like to do it both ways. That way, if they agree, then I'm probably right. And if they disagree, then I probably did something wrong. Um, I'm not usually very good at getting the right answer. I can always get the right answer, but I usually also get some wrong answers in the process. So I like to use um, <clears throat> self-checking and consistency ideas to kind of weed out the bad answers. So this is what we're going to work with. Uh, voltage, uh, electromagnetic force equals negative deflux dt. All right. What is the direction of the induced current in resistor R in figure A where the bar magnet is moved to the left? Okay. So I'm going to expand this guy a little bit. It's, you know, it's pretty good, but we can do better. So this is going to be negative um, d. I'm going to do. Hang on. I'm not going to do b dot a because I know they're already uh, parallel. So I'm going to call it bam like that, All right? Because we know that flux is magnetic field times area. So then we're going to use the ah, what is this multiplication? The product rule. We're going to use the product rule. So this is going to be db dt times a plus dA dt times b. So if you have either a changing magnetic field or a changing area, then you're going to get a induced voltage, induced voltage or EMF. All right? So I'm basically going to use this for every single one of them. Click. So I'm going to use it right over here. I'll do it over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right here. Bam. But I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Oh, that worked out well. All right. So where this bar magnet is creating magnetic field that goes like this. It's also creating a magnetic field that goes like this. And it's doing it the opposite way too. So, but the idea is the further away you get, the weaker magnetic field is going to be. So the area of this coil is going to be the same. Area of the coil, not changing. Therefore, dA dt, change this guy to red. Ooh, is that a red? More of a maroon? No, I don't know. This guy is going to be zero, which is going to make this whole section right here zero, which makes it not important, not matter. Now, we know that dB dt is going to be getting weaker because we're moving the bar magnet away. So this guy is going to be less than zero. A is going to be positive. A is, a is always positive. You can't add negative area. That'd be silly. Hmm. But it might make a great science fiction novel. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. All right. So we have a number that's less than zero because the change, since B is getting weaker, the change in B over time is going to be negative. We have a negative number times a negative number, which is going to be a positive number. Positive number. All right. So what that positive number means is that the uh, the coil of wire is going to make a magnetic field in the direction of the original magnetic field. So the positive or negative just means in the same direction as the magnetic field that currently is going or against the direction of the magnetic field that's currently going. So right here, we know that magnetic field goes out from the north and, <coughs> and into the south. Hmm, I should probably check that real quick. Magnet. Let's see if we have a... Aha! No. Aha! There we go. Out from the north, into the south. Bam! Go team. Alright, so we want this coil of wire right here to make a magnet, magnetic field going the way it is. So, from left to right, up top. So using the right hand rule, kind of go like this. So we know the current 
on that's closest to us and the wires that we can see have to be going down. So I'm going to zoom in crazy close on this. I'm going to draw down, 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 and down. And this is the current. So for it to go this way, it has to go this way and around. So it has to go up here, down here, which means current is going from A to B. Because that will then create a magnetic field that's in the same direction as this. Got it. Bam, A to B. And that's how you do this guy. Now intuitively, like, all right, this field is going to pose any change. So what we're doing is we have a magnetic field from the magnet, and we're pulling it away. So it wants to create a magnetic field going. Uh, so it's weakening the magnetic field of the coil. Well, it wants to oppose that, so it wants to create a magnetic field through the coil to, you know, kind of even out life. So it does like this, then we go through the same idea, and then, yes. So then it'd be A to B again. So it's similar logic, one is more formal than the other. Um, both are useful. So yes, I concur with myself. It goes from A to B. All right, on to part two. Probably gonna ask the same question. What is the direction of current induced? Why is it induced current here, but this is current induced? I don't know. In the resistor R, after the switch S is switch S and figure B is closed. All right. Come on, math. Don't fail me now. Oh, make small. Put there. Zoom in. Okay. So we we um, close this wire. This is probably just iron or something to make the solenoid better. Something to do with the inductance. What is the direction of the current induced in the resistor R after the switch S is the figure is closed? Okay, so they close the switch, creates a current through here, creates a magnetic field. Okay, so looking at this right here, I'm going to start with blue. So I'll do blue for like the original portion and then um, gold, not gold, pink, red, whatever for the change. All right, so we have current comes out here, comes down here. Like this, and back down. Okay, so that, nope. So it's gonna create a magnetic field going this way. Up and around, going that direction. So magnetic field is created this way. So the area of this loop right here does not change. So we know the area equals zero, which or change in area over time equals zero. Therefore, the whole second portion equals zero. Okay. So the area this is greater than zero. Now the change of magnetic field respect to time. The change of magnetic field for this point uh, in time is going to be uh, it's going to start at zero and it's going to get bigger. Therefore, the change will be greater than zero. So what's going to happen is going to be a counter. Uh, electromagnetic force, CEMF, as opposed to an EMF. So this is going to create a magnetic field going this direction. So to create that, we're going to use the right-hand rule, kind of look at it like this. And so the current has to go down this way and up this way. So here we have positive number times a positive number because positive, negative. So it's going to have a negative. Um, so the EMF, oh. Yeah, so it's going to create a negative EMF. And by negative, I mean it's going to create a magnetic field in the opposite direction of the current magnetic field. So it's going to go that way as shown. So it's going to be up and around. So it's going to go from B to A. Okay, does that seem reasonable? I'm going to mark this guy down real quick before I forget my logic. Up, 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 up. Swirl. Hmm. That pink really does doesn't really jump out at you, doesn't it? All right. So now, when you're taught with like the whole um, opposing a uh, change in magnetic field, a loop of wire opposes a change in magnetic field. So we think about all right, magnetic field is created this direction, so it wants to create so the loop wants to create a magnetic field in that direction. So yeah, B to A. Okay, same idea. So the math and the intuitive were the same. Okay. Good. So now for the last part. What is the direction of the induced current in the resistor R, the figure, in the figure C, 
when the current i in figure c decreases rapidly to zero. Okay. Bam. Yes. Still saved it. Still got it. All right. So for this guy again, gonna look at it the same way again. And then it looks like every time here, the area is gonna stay the same. Um, I would still recommend writing up the whole DA because you never really know before the problem starts. On the test, they're not gonna be like, oh, hey, this is the one where you only have to use this portion. And it's just still write it. It'll be, it's it'll be a good habit, and it's worth writing the whole thing out. All right. So change in area with respect to time will be zero. This whole part right here will be zero. So this is creating a magnetic field. Right hand rule. Uh, why am I so bad at this? All right, so we into the board there. Oh, no, nope, no, nope. I should be using blue for the original. If I started a uh, pattern, I should probably keep it. Into the board, out of the board. And this guy is going to be less than zero. So we have less than zero, less than zero. So we're going to have electro greater than zero because negative times a negative is a positive. So we have a positive. So we're going to have a magnetic field in the same direction as the magnetic field currently is. Therefore, we're going to have, create a magnetic field in this direction, which is into the board. And to do that, we're going to have to go, let's see here, and, and maybe, maybe, A to B. So we're going to have to do current going this direction. So that, so you think of this as an intuitive idea. It's like, well, the magnetic field in there is dying off. So it's going to want to oppose the dying off, so it's going to want to reinforce, re rejuvenate this magnetic field. So to do that, it's going to have to go in the same direction. So A to B. So what is the direction of the induced current? A to B. Boom. All right, that's all there is for this one. Um, it looked really easy, but like all you have to do is make one mistake on this, and then you get the whole problem wrong. So I recommend taking your time with these problems as best you can. Um, some of these multiple choices can be worth a lot of points on the test, so they add up quickly, so it's worth taking your time and getting them correct. And if you do make a mistake, I recommend just making another mistake, because I imagine on these kind of problems, two wrongs does make a right. All right, that's all for this one. We're on to problem number eight.